I, my doctor, Edward Omani Boama. Thank you very much for your time. Good morning to you. Good morning. Doc, I hope you're well. I'm doing very well. Trust me, I'm also well. I am also doing well too. And I'm sure you listen in detail to what the Electoral Commission said. First, your response. I listened in dispatches, but my summary is that the Electoral Commission has admitted to the errors that we have pointed out. My summary is that the Electoral Commission has admitted implicitly to the fact that the Electoral Commission is a crime scene as we speak because people have been able to make changes to the register. Unauthorized changes remain. I also hear clearly that the Electoral Commission is not in any position to grant a request for a forensic audit. That also demonstrates the opacity with which they are going about their work. Because for any serious unbiased commission, they should be happy that the NDC is being extremely helpful to them. And we have demonstrated our willingness to help them cure their incompetence over the period. You recall that during the limited registration, when they were having problems with simple arithmetic, arithmetic errors, and then the chairperson of the Electoral Commission came out to say that it was because their IT department was using Coral Draw. That was how come they were making those mistakes. We were the very party that had intervened to make those corrections for them. You recall that we had to disclose to Ghanaians that items had been stolen at the headquarters of the Electoral Commission under CCTV surveillance, together with military and police protection, before Ghanaians could know. You also recall that when the Electoral Commission wanted to drive away agents of political parties during the recent transfer exercise, we were the very party that stood our grounds and said the agents must stay. Why am I referring to transfers? Just imagine if our agents <coughs> away as the Electoral Commission wished. Just imagine the quantum of fraud that would have taken place. Is it safe to assume that the Electoral Commission just wanted to drive the agents away during the transfer so that the kind of horrible transfers that we have seen, we have detected from our comparative analysis of the 2023 register and the 2024 register would have even been on a higher scale as we speak. Our findings so far are that 243,550 Previous transfers, that is transfers that were done in 2020, have been illegally added to the 2024 transfers. And regarding this I transfer, there are some of them that their names even appear multiple times in it. Beyond this, and when we asked the Director for Electoral Services of the Electoral Commission said on Joy News that, oh, it is, they did it deliberately and that is because they wanted the political parties to trace the history of transfers. That cannot be the case. Because if you want to check history of transfers, what you use is the absent list. You don't compound the current transfer list with previous transfer list. What do I mean? If Senna was previously living in the water region and you have migrated to Accra and you transfer your vote to Accra, 
is the transfer was effected in 2020. In 2024, your name is already in the British Register in Accra. So there's no business for your name to be on the transfer list in Accra. But that is what the Electoral Commission has done. 243,540 of these. Another variant of this is that 15,000, over 15,000 transfers have been done that we cannot tell where the people were registered. The path cannot be traced. Is it safe to assume that these people are people who were illegally registered? That is how come they cannot show the path. Bearing in mind that biometric voter registration kits have been stolen at the headquarters of the EC. Another variant is that 3,957 voters in 2023 register have been deleted from the 2024 and this we are we are still continuing to analyze deleted completely another variant 2094 voters transferred to different police stations and you can't find them on the absent voter list as required by law this is the most dangerous one where the files were corrupt so if you open the file you can't find the photo of the person, you can't find the person's name, you can't find the person's age. Can you imagine if you went to the police station on December 7th, you show your ID card, they can't find your name, they can't find your photo, they can't find your age. How are you going to vote? Do you know the answer the EC offered? We wish the media covered this. But because they know fraudulent manipulation that had engaged in and what we were going to expose, they blocked the media. What they said was that, oh, once the person has an ID card, they can manually write the person's name in the register. Really? I told them that is a Richard Agiagba criminal phenomenon. That they can manually write the yes, person's manually name? manually write the name in the register. Look, the Electoral Commission is a crime scene. Take it from me. It is a crime scene. Complete crime scene. And that is why we are insisting that there must be a forensic audit. And this forensic audit is non negotiable. Let me assure our supporters that our call for a forensic audit is only to perfect the register. We have our game plan. We are on top of our game. We will be ahead of them every step of the way. Victory will be assured. And as I said yesterday on another station, even if they don't grant the forensic audit today, they should know that the greater and deeper forensic audit awaits them on January 7, 2025, when President Mahama is sworn into office. And NDC has a significant majority in parliament. So they either accept the forensic audit today when MPP is in power, or they only postpone it to tomorrow, February 7, when President Mahama is the president. We are winning this election. We are ahead of them in this game. We know exactly what we are talking about. Mm. Look, this forensic audit is going to tell the extent of manipulation how widespread the issue of illegal voter transfers are they themselves have admitted to our expose in Pusiga that the transfers from Tamale South to Pusiga how many more are in there they cannot tell you the transfer is going to also expose the forensic audit is also going to expose system vulnerabilities, human and technical. What are the vulnerabilities in the electoral commission system 
that allow for these unauthorized eye transfers? Are there specific protocols or security measures that were bypassed or ignored? And if I should say, specifically, would the EC's attempts to address these weaknesses prevent further manipulations ahead of the day? December 7 elections. How can we trust the EC? That they say that, oh, we are fixing it. We have fixed it. The same EC that just in December 2023, different level elections. Look at the chaos. They even had to postpone some regions. Some parts in Eastern region, some parts in Ashanti region. They had to postpone the election. So if this EC, that cannot even manage simple arithmetic, comes to tell you we have solved the problem. They want us to believe them. We cannot believe them. So the forensic audit is non-negotiable. We are leading with our teaming supporters and all Ghanaians, patriotic Ghanaians, who want the good of our democracy, the progress of our nation, who want to end the reign of impunity, corruption, that has bedeviled this nation over the past seven years and nine months to pour out in their numbers on Tuesday, September 7, starting at 7 a.m. at the Kwame Nkrumah Interchange. Let us spit fire figuratively for the government that is manipulating the pliant electoral commission to know that enough is enough. Enough of the corruption. Enough of the day corrupting the electoral commission of Ghana. Enough of the manipulation of data at the electoral commission. Enough of the theft of biometric equipment at the headquarters of the Electoral Commission under CCTV surveillance, military surveillance, and police surveillance. Enough of the incompetence of the Electoral Commission and the government. Enough of the scourgery. Enough of the neglect of the suffering Ghanaian. And enough of their so-called strategy that they intend to use to win this election, which is not happening through our efforts and by the grace of God. Let's say enough is enough. And because the election the election is on December 7, 84 days from now, this demonstration is happening in all regional capitals. Mm. And so, Upper East is saying enough is enough. Upper West is saying enough is enough. North East is saying enough is enough. Northern region is saying enough is enough. Savannah region is saying enough is enough. Bono East is saying enough is enough. Bono is saying enough is enough. Ahafu is saying enough is enough. Western North is saying enough is enough. Ashanti region is saying enough is enough. Uti region is saying enough is enough. Uti region is saying enough is enough. Vota region is saying enough is enough. Greater Accra region is saying enough is enough. Central region is saying enough is enough. And Western region is also saying enough is enough. Ghana is saying enough is enough. Enough of the corruption, enough of the incompetence, enough of the manipulation of the data, enough of all their rigging tactics. It will not work mm. on December 7th. Doc, a few things. First, um, let me start from the demonstration because uh, they indicated Mr. Tete, who addressed the press conference, said this demonstration will really create tensions and suspicions that what really is needed to resolve the issue is for you to come to the table. Why won't you take up that request? When we went to the table, I would say four issues crystallized. One was we asked for forensic audit. Do you think if they had granted the forensic audit, 
because I've gone on a demonstration. So we went to the table. Haven't you gone to the table? We wrote to the Electoral Commission and requested for the meeting. It even took President Mohammed's direct public statement before they wrote to fix the date for the meeting. So, haven't you gone to the table? We've gone to the table. Forensic audit. Let them grant it. Why are they not granting it? Then they requested that we should submit our findings to them. Let me share a bit of what happened at the meeting with you. Okay. We went into the meeting. And the EC, Jemensa, Bosman Asari, Mr. Tete, they were there. Together with their IT consultant, Dr. Yaofurege, who was my senior in the medical school, who is the IT consultant for the EC. We were on the same floor. I know his political affiliation. He's as MPP as I am NDC. He is the IT consultant for the Electoral Commission. When we presented our facts, he wanted to disprove one of them. So he asked for the person's ID, voter ID number. He entered it into the system and he said the person's name is on the register. As smart as our team is, we asked him, where is the person placed now in the register? Then he mentioned a constituency in the voter region. I won't mention the name. We told him that is erroneous. The compared the register they gave us the person is nowhere near water region. Do you now appreciate why it is dangerous for us to prematurely hand over our data to them? I'll give you another evidence. Just three days ago, on Joy News, their director for electoral services, Mr. Banobio, said they deliberately added the 2020 transfers to the 2024 transfers so that we can trace the history. So you see, the more we give them the information, the more they find excuses, even if they don't make sense. So our position is that we have given them the tip of the iceberg. We, we even asked for their so-called updated register because they claim they've been correcting the register. So we said, okay, if you've been correcting, provide us with the update. We gave them a hard drive. Today is one week since we gave them the hard drive. And that is why I'm saying they should return a hard drive to us if they are not ready and willing to provide us with the updated I register. And so you, Electoral Commission, paid with our taxes. You are asking us to provide you with our data. And we even gave you hard drive that you to provide us with your so-called updated data. You have not provided it. And you had the audacity, the orphan tree, to go to town and be saying that you are waiting for us to bring our data. What level of incompetence? The impudence. And then Mr. Tete, I'm ashamed on his behalf. Look, I don't care whatever mistakes the EC made in 2016 regarding the register. The people who are at the EC are alive. They can go and defend it. So this MPP strategy of equalization, it doesn't work with me. If Kalamse is destroying our waters, then they are trying to equalize. Which equalization is not even built on any serious foundation. And I'm surprised people who worked at the EC in 2016 are not stepping out to defend their legacy. We are not going to defend that our legacy for them. Unlike the MPP that is defending the Electoral Commission. We will not do that. But you see, what is shameful is that Mr. Tete, who addressed the press conference, was the director for electoral services in 2016. Can you imagine? Hmm. 
you must be somebody. I don't want to use any word. You must be something else to want to be describing your own legacy in sect terms. Look, under what circumstances would you release this evidence? The one you have in your position, possession? The, in fact, the evidence has gone beyond what um, I have disclosed to you. Just yesterday, Water Region alone submitted 44 pages of additional evidence. 44 Just pages? Yesterday. 44 pages. Just yesterday. 44 pages. All we are saying is, forensic audit team must be established independent and will provide all these things look the EC is a crime scene and if we do not show them red and black pouring out in our numbers on Tuesday wearing red wearing black holding placards and letting them know that enough is enough, they will continue to take Ghanaians, including the NDC, for granted. Akufado has been going around saying that he cannot hand over to somebody that he defeated. He's choking. He will run away and leave the Flagstaff house. Well, the EC points out, and rightly so, that they've been doing this since 1992. They've proven capable of identifying these issues and addressing them. That why don't you have trust that under the circumstance, this evidence when provided, they can use that evidence to make the necessary corrections for you to be satisfied with the register they will put forward. Why should we have trust when this, this set of people in charge of the Electoral Commission sat down to be raped. What do I mean? They sat down for biometric voter registration equipment to be stolen at the headquarters under CCTV surveillance, under military surveillance, with police protection. Your colleague journalists who accompanied us to the Electoral Commission on Monday for us to file President Mohammed's nomination will tell you the layers of security that they went through before entering the conference hall of the Electoral Commission. Look, the first one is a bar. Even before that, you see the military and the police. You then encounter civilian security men. From there is the main door. From the main door is a metal detector. And you know where that lands you. That lands you only at the front desk where the receptionist is I sit in. These layers of security I've mentioned, it lands you only at the front desk where the receptionist is sitting. Yet, biometric voter registration laptops could be stolen. You should trust them. We cannot trust them. They can trust this end. It's not demanded. That is one. Two. Don't we all know the backgrounds of people like Bosman Asare, uh, Dr. Piahine, and the rest? Haven't I told you that the IT consultant that they brought to sit before me directly, we were on the same medical school hostel floor, Kolebuti City Hospital. You understand? You know how campus, we argue, we talk about politics. Mm. So if that person, who is and as I told IJ Mensa, that the IT consultant is more MPP than Osman Asare. If that person is in charge of IT, assuming we didn't find any discrepancies, that is fine. Then you can trust. But so long as you have this Classic tincture of MPP activists pretending to be working for the Electoral Commission, that is completely erased. There is something called the trust equation. The denominator that demolishes the trust equation 
is where there's self-interest. There's no doubt that the coefficient of personal bias of key actors at the Electoral Commission is obvious. And so trust is erased. The only way we can work together is for things to be done right. Now, where should trust be? When after we've given you just a tip of the iceberg, you are beginning to rationalize that, oh, you deliberately made the mistake of adding previous transfers to the current transfers. And then the journalist asks him, did you inform the political parties you are going to change the way you do it? Look, Upper West is saying enough is enough. Upper East is saying enough is enough. North East is saying enough is enough. Northern region is saying enough is enough. Savannah region is saying enough is enough. Bono East is saying enough is enough. Bono is saying enough is enough. Afro is saying enough is enough. Western North is saying enough is enough. Asante region is saying enough is enough. Eastern region is saying enough is enough. Uti is saying enough is enough. Water says enough is enough. Little Accra says enough is enough. Central region says enough is enough. Western region says enough is enough. Mm. Doc, let's conclude on this now. This say do know who says what about if they use that to win the election? What you have identified? Trust me, we are on top of our game. Trust me. They do not know the fullest extent of the ammunition at our disposal. We know the problems and we know how to counter them.